This is the British Army World War II oversuit for tank crews. Um, sometimes known as the pixie suit because when the hood's worn in the up position it comes to a point like a pixie's hat. Um, this is the standard one that was issued to British AFV crews in the Second World War. Um, it was introduced in July of 1943 and three different types were issued. This is the commonest one that you find today. It's in a heavy cotton fabric of a light khaki colour which varied from a pink hue to a buff colouring. Um, the garment was completely lined with uh, a khaki coloured woolen Ang Angola shirt material. It was cut deliberately large to allow the wearing of the standard British battle dress blouse and, and uniform underneath it. <clears throat> um, the oversuit had 13 pockets. It was reinforced at the knees, elbows and seat and it had a detachable hood held by Preston poppers. Um, and it's, it had specially strengthened shoulder straps as well because if the guy was injured inside the tank the crew members could grab him by the shoulder straps and manually haul him out of the tank. Um, the oversuit for tank crews remained in service long after the Second World War when it was adopted for AFV crews but in the 50s it was changed to a different material. Um, the tank suit <coughs> is also available as a denim one and also for the Far East they did them in a camouflage material. So this is the tank suit, it's got two full length zips running all the way down from the top to the bottom of the legs on either side. It's got pockets all over it right the way up it's got pencil flaps there pockets all the way down inside it's got pockets inside it it's woolen material and more often than not the manufacturer's label will be at the sleeve so there <clears throat> Um, Oversuit Tank Cruise Size 2 made in Macclesfield in 1944 and not very many survived because after the war they were all sold um, as government surplus and most of them would, have, would be used as uh, garage mechanics overalls and uh, open top car drivers, protective wear, things like that so not a lot of them survived nowadays. The hoods do survive because a lot of them um, were issued without hoods so you will find a hood before you actually find the tank suit in conjunction with that also issued was the Royal Armoured Corps pattern steel helmet which is basically it's the same shell as the paratrooper and the dispatch riders helmet but inside it has the liner from the Mark II British Army helmet and the osticated strap as well so that particular pattern is the Royal Armoured Corps pattern steel helmet for tank crews. Now this particular one, this particular tank helmet, was issued, I've got it all written down here, to a J.C. McCarran of the Royal Tank Regiment who won the military cross in the war. Um, it, its particular item was worn in North Africa by this particular tank commander. His convoy was attacked by an ME-109 and the crew abandoned the tank and hid under the vehicle. Now McKerran went from cover to rescue the crew member when the attacking aircraft opened fire and the helmet shell has a dent in it from a 7.92 bullet from the aircraft. Now McKerran pulled the crew member to cover for which he was awarded the military cross. Now the helmet with its bullet strike um, and the paint loss from the North African desert heat he, he considered it his lucky piece and it hung in his attic until I bought it from his son back in the 1990s. So if we have a look, I don't know if we'll be able to pick it up, but you see there, that's the dink in the back, right there, where it was hit by a German bullet. That's quite a nice piece. So in conjunction with the Royal Armoured Corps steel helmet, they would have also worn into war the standard black tank berry with 
the interwar Royal Armour Corps cap badge and during the war the standard black tank berry with the Royal Tank Regiment badge um, also part of the vehicle kit would be this this is the armoured fighting vehicle and sometimes glider large map board it's got a hook for hanging up inside the vehicle it's got uh, pockets for pencils it opens up there's a large fiber board with a, a plexi cover and this one has a map of the defenses at Weestram bigot 15 19th May 44 so that's the standard AFV crew map board Let's see, it's got you can easily identify one because it tends to have this big metal reinforcing H on the back of it and also we have the standard pattern um, tank communication headset that will be worn by a driver or commander and this one on the mouthpiece is dated 1943 and also by way of armoured fighting vehicle equipment this is a quite a rare uh, handbook for the Sherman 5 adder flamethrower tank now the Sherman 5 was the British designation for the the American M4 Sherman tank and what this one is for is for the British experimental flamethrower conversion now if we get to this bit here this is a top view of the tank it's got its turret with the main gun but if we look there on the uh, the hatch for the gunner there's an additional little attachment with the actual flamethrower mounted on top of the gunner's hatch um, wasn't a success it wasn't adopted for service um, it was developed by 1944 but it wasn't actually used in action so that's quite a rare British Army handbook for the Sherman V Adder which was an experimental flamethrower tank so that's my British Army armoured fighting vehicle crew equipment Second World War overalls, helmet, barrier, map board, map, construction booklet some nice quite rare bits and pieces there anyway